Hey guys, Melissa here. Thanks for joining me today. Um, so I'm going to talk about some social media stuff I've been on and what's going on. So let me just try to hold this with more, more light, hold it up a little bit. Um, I definitely need to invest in my stuff here. But anyways, okay. So I am hearing women say as of today, they do not want to ruin their body by being pregnant. How is that truth? How does that work? I remember my husband actually noticed my hips in, uh, in one of the younger grade school grades we were in together before I even noticed them um, developing. When we have kids, our hips really develop. Um, it's it's beautiful I mean men are attracted to a woman's body and being pregnant doesn't ruin your body it actually enhances your body we have a short amount of time that we're able to bear children and it's just the way it works so saying that your body is going to be ruined by being pregnant doesn't make sense um, what ruins a woman's body is when she doesn't take care of her body that's what does it but if you are staying physically active and moving around, I mean, there's so many women who have had five, six, or seven kids and you wouldn't know it. Um, I still get carded sometimes when I go to buy like wine for cooking and I've been married for so long. So you can take good care of yourself. It doesn't have to be you're either going to look good or you're going to look awful when you're pregnant. And there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of a weight, you know, weight on your hips as a mother. You're a mother, so you're going to have a little bit of a cushion and it's okay. I mean, obviously, if you are married, uh, you already have the one that you chose to marry and you're not trying to really impress other men you're already all set. So you really are not made to be still attracting like you were when you were single and didn't have children. There's the there's a way the body's made that we are meant in certain stages in our lives to have certain, you know, seasons. I also had someone else say to me, well, Jesus forgives, so I'm going to keep on getting abortions. And Yes, God forgives when we're truly sorry and truly repentful. Um, we usually try not to do those things again, but when we are seeking out abortion after abortion, it's not okay. I mean, I've known of women who have had three abortions, and there's something going on there, and we definitely want to be able to help women and not say, yeah, go ahead, you know, God forgives, so just go ahead and have some more. Um, grace in our life and forgiveness is not so that we can, you know, continue in sin and continue killing people and doing wrong. Um, it's so that we can be forgiven and live a very high um, calling in life, a calling where we're constantly disciplining ourselves and correcting ourselves and trying to walk in truth. That's what forgiveness does for us. It doesn't allow us to continue walking in darkness because God says whoever walks in darkness is of is not of the light and the reason why men love darkness more than light is because they like their evil deeds um so we definitely don't want to be doing this and we want to be changing all the time and that's what grace gives us the ability to do the whole gospel gives us the ability to live a higher standard. It's a standard from the heart, not going into, uh, you know, more awful stuff. So the way of the um, upright usually goes upward, not spirals down, and that's kind of where we want to be in our life. And there's so many lies around abortion, and people will support your lies. They will tell you lies so that you do abort your child. And you know, once you do, there's usually an awful regret, um, as I've shared about a circumstance in my life that was pretty much forced and manipulated on me. And that wasn't even me knowing what an abortion was. So um, knowing what it is and going for it, it's just not okay. 
So this is what we're dealing with right now. We are seeing a lot of good coming out of many people getting involved and saying, hey, you can't just be killing. You can't be doing this. It's not okay. We're starting to see churches speak about this. Um, you know, for 30 years or so, uh, we haven't really stood up for life. And it's such a fundamental thing. And I think it's the biggest battle of society. The biggest battle we have right now. Okay, thanks for joining me today, guys.